the economy is not going to recover. It's not going to bounce back and rise to new heights like the politicians and the media have been trying to convince you. This global recession, or more accurately, this global depression that we've been in this past five years is not a temporary downturn. It's the beginning of the end of an era. If you're watching this video, you're probably curious as to when the system is going to unravel. However, this question can't be answered without looking at the why. The why will determine the how, and the how will determine the when. After the crash of 2008, a lot of people suddenly started caring about things like monetary policy, national debt, and central banking, and they began educating themselves on these topics in order to understand what was happening, and to get some idea of what was coming. In response, scores of internet pundits and self-made economists rose up to answer their questions and to predict when and how the system would fall. Unfortunately, many of these would-be teachers were promoting an outdated worldview that left out the most important variables, and as a result, their predictions fell flat on their face, over and over again. For example, when the Federal Reserve began flooding the economy with cash through the bailouts and its series of quantitative easing, many predicted that this would quickly lead to hyperinflation. America was about to become the next Weimar Germany, or Zimbabwe. Soon we were going to be carrying wheelbarrows full of cash to the grocery store just to buy bread. Many predicted this would happen by the summer of 2009, others by mid-2011. Of course, they were all wrong. Why? They were wrong because they didn't understand what actually gives the dollar value. It's true that the U.S. dollar is debt-based, and it's not backed by gold or any other precious metal. And it is true that when money is created as debt, it comes with interest, and the money to pay that interest never exists. Therefore, it is inherently a Ponzi scheme doomed to fail from the start. However, it's not entirely accurate to say that the dollar is backed by nothing. The U.S. dollar, which is the world reserve currency and therefore affects everyone on this planet, is backed by two things, oil and the U.S. military. After Nixon ended the gold standard in 1971, he immediately began brokering deals with every member of OPEC, offering military protection in return for them only selling their oil and U.S. dollars. By 1975, every OPEC nation had been brought into this agreement. From that point on, if you wanted to buy oil in the international markets, you needed Federal Reserve notes. And that meant that America could now print out as much funny money as they wanted. And the rest of the world would still have to use it, just as long as no one in OPEC backed out. This arrangement is called the petrodollar status. This is what prevents the dollar from going into hyperinflation, like a normal currency might. That's not to say that running the printing presses like Mad Men has no effect. The dollar has lost a great deal of its perceived value since the 1970s. However, the inflation and the economic effects of the Federal Reserve's policies are not proportional to what you would see if a country like Australia were to do the same thing to their currency. This is due to the fact that the demand for dollars created by the petrodollar status mitigates inflation to a large degree by distributing the consequences globally, rather than merely affecting the United States. Essentially. America gets to write hot checks, and the rest of the world has to pay the bill. Now this gig is perfect for the U.S. as long as no one decides to buck the system, like Iraq did in 2000 by starting to sell their oil in euros, or like Libya did by trying to pull most of Africa off of the dollar, or like Iran is doing now. As long as the U.S. military is able to crush or intimidate any major oil-producing nation that defies them, the petrodollar arrangement will stand, and the dollar will retain its position. What this means is that the economic collapse cannot be predicted by looking at stock market charts, interest rates, GDP, or any of these other standard economic indicators. Because as long as America has the power to write hot checks at the entire planet's expense, they're going to keep bailing out the banks and the corporations. There's no question about that whatsoever. Heck, they'll drop money out of helicopters if they have to. Of course, the situation can't last forever. The obscene national debt, the massive derivatives black hole still on the books, and the impending municipal bond crisis will eventually destabilize the rest of the system. And if allowed to run its course with these bailouts and the quantitative easing cushioning the fall, we would be in for a very slow, painful economic death spiral. However, that's not a very likely scenario. As of right now, our present course has us heading towards a third world war. This is where the game will most likely play out unless we take drastic action. And this is where we need to be putting our attention. The showdown that's developing in Syria and Iran, with the U.S. finally acknowledging that military action is being planned, has been in the works for many, many years. The evidence was readily available for those who were willing to take the time to research it. And U.S. Army General Martin Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said he provided President Obama with the options for the use of force in Syria. He said the U.S. is considering what he termed as kinetic strikes in Syria, but he did not go into further details. We see that the war talk is escalating, and not just on this side of the Atlantic. British generals basically echo what the U.S. says, but in even stronger terms. We talked about this in detail and predicted what was coming in several of our videos, including the road to World War III, and World War III has already begun. Over and over and over again, we've been showing you how China and Russia have been warning the U.S. and NATO not to go down this path, showing you how they've been warning that thermonuclear war could result. And we've shown you that in spite of this, 